Today we're gonna to talk about why not all licking branches and not all mock scrapes are good. I talked about this in a previous video several weeks back where I was just kind of mentioning a topic about licking branches because I was in a food plot, I was showing a licking branch setup that I had and I had trimmed all the branches I didn't want the bucks to hit and I only left the ones that I wanted them to hit. Well, not just that, but I also cut off any licking branches and any mock scrapes on my access trails. You might ask, why would you do that? Isn't every licking branch a good licking branch? And the answer would be no. And not every mock scrape is a good mock scrape. The thing about mock scrapes and licking branches, you don't necessarily want to have as many as you can fit on your property. There's like this theory out there that I've seen float around sometimes where people are like, the more, the better. You want as many mock scrapes, as many licking branches as possible because if there's way more of them, it's gonna hold the deer on the property longer. It's gonna be awesome. I do agree with that within your food plots that you have shots to them or within your food plots where you know it is in route to give you a shot opportunity or if it's in an area that is within like the heart of your property leading to or from a, again, a destination where you're gonna be killing those deer. Obviously they'll make scrapes and they'll use licking branches throughout the properties in different areas that you did not create but and they'll just find natural vines and stuff they'll just find natural things to to use and make them um, but i'm talking about the ones that you have the ability to influence it's just very crucial to understand what you're dealing with to make sure you get rid of the ones that you don't want and to enhance the opportunities of them that you do have for example i'm going to go into the number one problem that i see with mock scrapes and licking branches is access trails so i've got an access trail right behind me here and you can't see the whole thing but it goes all the way up through i've got a screen planted and it's between a tree line and a big screen and what i did on mine is i went through and i cut off every single licking any branch that could be used as a deer licking branch i cut it off i cut them all off and at least six foot high to make sure that there's nothing dangling in my path for a buck to stop and work one in the middle of my access trail why because i don't want to walk in at five in the morning just to blow a buck off of my access trail and it would be the off chance that it happened to be the buck i'm after and now he's not going to come back in because i just blew him off the trail okay i don't want that and i also don't want him to potentially get any pattern of hitting a mock scrape that's on an access trail if he's going to cross that trail i'd rather him just get across the access trail and leave i don't want him paralleling that trail to go down and hit a whole line of mock scrapes or licking branches that are on my access because even if I don't bump him and he visually sees me, he will hit that again at night when I'm not there and he will smell that I was there. And it can just lead to a bad combination of things between smell and possible sight. All around, you just do not want them on your access trails. And yes, I have you know heard this many times, even friends, people that I hunt with, people that they're, they're great, they're great deer hunters. They kill a lot of deer, they have a lot of fun. But I was just actually, I was just with a couple of guys. We were out of state and I was doing some food plot work with them. No dogging on these guys. They are the most fun people in the world to hang out with. But we were walking on an access trail that we had to use to get to a stand. And there's like a perfect, there's like this perfect licking branch that's like, I don't know, mid, like chest high, not quite shoulder high, about chest high. It was like perfect height, like textbook, like that thing's gonna get smoked. It was the only one in the trail, right in the middle of the trail hanging low and he's like man he's like that is just perfect like I'm gonna leave that there man I'd love it if a buck came through and made a pattern to hit this thing right outside of this food plot keep in mind we're still about 40 50 yards away from the food plot about 60 yards away from the tree stand in the food plot and it's on the only access trail to get to the tree stand leading up to the corner of that food plot I didn't say anything because you know I didn't want to hurt the guy's feelings or act like oh i know better and i know this and that that's a bad idea you should cut it off because it's a property that everybody kind of shares and they all hunt it together as as just have fun just as an extra place to hunt so it's not a big deal moral of the story is what i'm thinking when i see that is holy smoke somebody's got to cut that off because it, it it is a perfect mock scrape location it's on an access road it's right outside of a food plot 50 60 yards it's on the downwind side where a buck would want to circle that way and hit that thing and it's just a bad combination because now you're encouraging that deer to go behind your stand where your wind is blowing down your access to try to get to that thing when the reality is you want to keep them and create them within the food plot preferably on the side of the food plot you're going to be able to hunt and get shots to and you want to cut down anything that's 
on that access trail because you're going to create opportunities for that deer to bust you or several deer to bust you and it's just not something you want to have happen. Now let's talk about mock scrapes and licking branches inside of food plots. I'm going to get out of the sun just a little bit more here. So in my food plots I have made it my decision to legitimately go through and cut down every mock scrape branch, every licking branch that is going to be in a location that is going to hinder my ability to get a shot on a deer. I don't necessarily want 25 mock scrapes in my food plot. Um, a, the deer aren't going to hit all of them anyway. And B, because if I've got one that's 50 yards away in the back corner and it's sitting behind a big shrub or a big bush, a big tree that I can't get a shot to, I don't necessarily want a buck standing over there for 30 to 60 seconds working that thing. Meanwhile, I'm over here shaking my legs in the tree stand excited to get a shot and turns out he was just going to come to that corner hit that one and turn around and go back in and never even make it across the food plot meanwhile had i just cut that branch off and the only other one that he could hit was 10 yards closer around the other side of that bush i could have gotten a shot at him at you know whatever it is 35 yards and could have killed him those are situations too where if if you see my food plot here you'll notice there is a tree it was a very odd shaped shrubby tree and i cut off all the licking branches on the back side of this thing because it was just outside of the bow range that I like to hunt and take shots at. All of the licking branches on the back side of that thing were all just outside of the distance that I comfortably like to take shots at. Not to mention, when a buck is working that thing, I'm not gonna be able to see him, I'm not gonna be able to get a shot, and he's certainly not gonna be broadside. He's gonna be facing me head on. So all the mock scrapes that I have in my food plots, they're all positioned to where a buck will have to come in. He will have to turn broadside to hit that thing when he's accessing the plot. They're situated in a way that he has to come in, he has to turn to give me that broadside or slightly quartering away shot if he wants to work that thing. Same with my water hole that I have in my plot. I know some guys say, don't put water holes in food plots. I disagree with that. I just believe that it's circumstantial in that if you have no structure in your food plot and if your food plot is vast and open, probably not a good idea. But mine is tucked very close to cover and I specifically leave patchy planted corn in this plot to give it some structure and some feel that there's security in the plot as a like transition zone to go from this like sparsely planted corn and turnip plot that transitions over to a bean and brassica plot up a little bit further. But this is a great spot for him to hit that if he's just coming out of the woods 30 yards to hit that water hole hit a mock scrape and go back in if he wants to that's fine at least it gives me the opportunity and when i put that water hole in he uses it like crazy but the moral of the story is i position it to give me shots and with all the mock scrapes that i have in my food plots you know it's not like you can just put one mock scrape and just be like oh if i put that that's the only one these deer are going to hit although a lot of times if it's the only one in the food plot that is what they're going to hit but i like to give them multiple options within bow range from different types of tree species if they're available but i just like to give them the ability to feel like they're naturally picking the one that works best for them and the way they want to use the plot but at the end of the day if there's a mock scrape in my food plot it's because i have a shot to it and that's why i'm leaving it there but anything that gives me no shot opportunities anything that gives the deer the opportunity to come in hit it and leave and not get shot or come in have it facing me head on when he's coming out of the woods and there's a good chance he's going to spook because he could see me as I'm trying to get ready for my shot. I don't have those. I make sure that all the mock scrapes that I have bring those deer in and position them to where I can get a shot at them. And those are the kind of mock scrape opportunities that I like to present in my food plots. But moral of the story, the biggest mistake I see with mock scrapes from my own experience and the own, ooh, I don't think I would do that situations is access trail mock scrapes. They're on the trail you gotta walk in you know for a fact you're going to take a chance of spooking a deer off it whether he sees you he smells you he comes by and gets your scent trail after or you give him the opportunity to where now he found so many mock scrapes on your trail that he wants to act, like he wants to work mock scrapes on your access road it's just a bad combination it's not the worst thing in the world if you have a mock scrape in a food plot that you can't get a shot to if he's not going to spook and it's just a mock scrape that you for some reason want to leave in a location you can't get a shot to but you just like it in the food plot. As long as you're not spooking any deer, you're not necessarily hurting the situation, but you're hurting your odds of actually getting a shot at the deer if all your mock scrapes are in a location you can't actually get a shot to, especially since it's such a powerful tool and opportunity to bring those deer in and manipulate the food plot structure a little bit. 
I personally just don't see why you wouldn't want to try to have one within bow range that you can have a little more control over the situation. And if you don't have one in your food plot, you can add one to your food plot by simply taking a 24 inch auger with a four inch diameter, get yourself a hole, cutting a small sapling, dropping it down in there, pack it tight. And next thing you know, you've got your own rubbing post and licking branch, mock scrape location, right in the middle of your food plot, right in bow range where you want it. Hopefully that helps you guys, especially since right now is kind of your last minute opportunity to where if you do have mock scrapes on your access trails, get rid of them, okay? You don't want them on the trail you have to take to your stand especially if you are specifically trying to target highest quality of bucks in your area. Um, you are going to spook deer when you leave them on your access trails. Um, so if that is at all important to you, I would recommend you remove those. And I'll try to show you guys some examples throughout this video here as I'm talking about it. We do have some pretty good content here coming up soon. I'm gonna be taking this channel to an extreme level this season. I'm gonna be posting and producing lots of filmed hunts film hunts with me, my wife, probably with my son, might be getting him out for the first time this year. He's four, so we're gonna, we'll see how it goes. I might take him on a couple experimental sits and see how that goes. I'm um, gonna be hunting with my brother in Tennessee soon for velvet season. Gonna be hunting with my dad quite a bit. Some buddies out of state, different parts of the country. It's gonna be awesome. So if you guys want to see those hunts being produced and put out there, that is gonna be happening this season. We have filmed hunts in the past but never like at a dedicated level where I am going to dedicate myself to filming and producing hunts and also producing strategy content throughout the season, which this time I'm gonna be doing. And I'm gonna be going through it in several different states. We're gonna be hunting New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Tennessee, South Carolina. We're gonna be hunting a lot and we're gonna be producing a lot of content legitimately as a full-time gig. Let's get going on it. Season's almost here. For those of you that open up in August for some velvet seasons, uh, pretty pretty exciting, pretty crazy stuff. Hopefully you guys have some success. I know we're gonna be trying our best here in Tennessee soon. Anyways guys, thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next video.